Welcome to Becoming Laron Anthony. I'm your host, Laron Anthony, and this is my life. Disclaimer Becoming Laron Anthony is a podcast to help others through its shared experiences. This is not an attack for those who share similar experiences through these episode topics. Parental advisory is strongly suggested. Hey y'all, welcome to episode 5, Becoming Oneself in Masculinity. In tonight's episode, I will be discussing how I define myself when it comes to my masculinity. For me, I've learned that I have to stay true to myself. And I have to not try to fit into society, try to fit into the norms of what it means to be a man and that I can only define myself and that I don't have to be like every other man. I don't have to fit into the stereotypes or I don't have to be categorized as a sane man. That I can only be myself and that I should choose to be myself. And that I can only live my life. I can't live my life according to someone else or to their expectations or even what they believe a man should be and what he should look like. I have to accept myself for all that I am and not try to hide it, not try to pretend that I'm someone else, not masking who I really am not covering up, not hiding it, just embracing all that I am and being all that I can be and not trying to run away from who I really am, but love myself. Because I feel like if I cater to myself, then I will be okay. I don't have to try to be like everyone else because there's only one person There's only one me. There's no one else that is like me. And there's no one else that can try to be like me. Because there's only one Laron. And I have to be him. And I can't pretend to be someone else that I'm not. Even though I try to be like someone else. I try to fit in. I try to be a part of the boys club. God knows I try. But I realized that I have to accept myself and be comfortable within my skin, within my own identity, within my own self. But for a while, I felt uncomfortable in my skin, in my identity. To be honest with you guys, I didn't know who I was. Hell, I didn't know if I was a boy or not because I didn't feel like one. Because I used to be very flamboyant, very feminine. I was very soft. And I felt like like I couldn't be accepted. I felt like I didn't have my foot in when it comes to being a boy. Because I always felt like I was misplaced. I felt misunderstood. I felt like nobody truly understood me or accepted me or embraced me with loving arms I feel like like an outcast I was an outsider especially in grammar school all the way up to high school you know um, there's a such thing as peer pressure and I feel like when I immediately walk <clears throat> I'm sorry guys when I immediately walk into school I felt like there was like an opposing question on my forehead. Like, what am I? Because every time when I walk in the room, people would always gawk at me. And every time when they looked at me, I felt. I know I felt like they were just trying to dig deep into me. Like trying to figure out who I am. To be honest, I felt like an, a science experiment. Like trying to get to the root of what I am. And to be honest, I felt... 
don't know. I always felt like people always tried to figure out who I am, even if I didn't know who I was. And me feeling like that, I felt like like my choice was being taken away from me. I felt like like even though I had my own choice, I had my own will, but I felt like that was being taken away from me because I felt like nobody really knew me for me because I didn't even know who I was. And I felt like, you know, at that time growing up, it was hard because for one, you know, I was so young and I feel like when you so young, you're still figuring out who you are. And there's really no time frame to that. It just happens. But I feel like for me, I feel like, like there was like a, like a, um, like a clock on me. Like I had to like figure out who I am in this amount of time so that I wouldn't have to stay labeled or stay boxed up or not try to stick to those assumptions of what people thought about me because I wanted to come outside the box and be myself. But again, I did not know who I was because people felt like they knew me before I even knew myself. You know, the boys always gave me a hard time, especially this guy who used to bully me. I remember one time he made me feel very uncomfortable. And the reason why he made me feel uncomfortable because he he took out his penis and he shoved it at me. And I remember feeling violated. I remember feeling disgusted. I remember feeling belittled because that's what I felt in grammar school all the way up to high school. I felt belittled. I felt like, like I felt like, Oh no, I felt like a freak. You know, people made me feel like a freak. Like, people made me feel uncomfortable. Like, when I was around them. Like, I felt like I was walking around eggshells. Because even if I tried to, you know, talk to the guys and, you know, how us guys, we, you know, we have, you know, we have our talks. Like, if we see a cute girl, we'd be like, oh, you know, she's fine. And I feel like every time when I try to, like, talk to them or, like, comment on this girl or whatever... You know, I felt like they just look at me differently. Like, I felt like they would look at me like, oh, like you like girls. I did not know that. Like, And that's what I felt. You know, I felt like, like I felt ashamed of myself because I couldn't, you know, I couldn't be myself. I couldn't or, ease, or even try to figure out who am I. Like, I couldn't grow, basically. I couldn't allow myself to be open because I was constantly in my own way because I knew that people already made their assumptions about me. And even if I tried to, you know, try to convince them otherwise, they're still going to think what they're going to think. Just like people are going to talk regardless. And I just can't stop that. So I've always felt like outside of the box. Like I never was truly accepted. I never really felt belonging. I never really felt like I had a footing in when it comes to the boys club or when it comes to masculinity or when it comes to actually being a boy, being a man, because I felt uncomfortable because people made me feel uncomfortable about myself. And it's funny how me feeling like that at first, it was external But then it became internal. And it was hard for me to really completely let go of that feeling, that internal feeling of not feeling accepted, not being embraced with loving arms, not not feeling like an outcast. But instead, I feel like that feeling kept growing and growing inside of me to my core and still this day it still bothers me it still affects me it still lives a part of me unfortunately it is 
my own demon and it became my own worst critic. Especially like my inner voices. Because sometimes, you know, I can truly try to embrace myself and be comfortable in my own skin. And then I hear something in the back of my head like, 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 you know, you know, you're uncomfortable. You know, this isn't you. So I just feel like I'll be going back and forth with me trying to be comfortable with myself, but also feeling that uncomfortability within myself, that internal feeling within myself. And it's hard to shake it. It's hard to rub it off because I feel like it just become all that I am. Like anything that I do, I start to second guess myself, whether it's my clothing, whether it's the way I approach women, the way that I talk, you know, all those little small things, those little minor things, but those became bigger things for me. And I just started to feel uncomfortable within myself, even within my own actions, within my own emotions, because I felt wired, you know, um, you know, every other well, not every other man, but I'm pretty sure every man been told about what a man should be, you know, especially from a young age, like not to cry, not to show no emotions, because when you show emotions, you're weak. And to be honest, I felt like I felt weak, you know, because I was always the type of person to be very express. <coughs> Excuse me, guys, to be very expressive to be very open, transparent, vulnerable. I've always been that person that had been very intuitive within my feelings. And I was very assertive when it came to my emotions. And I always thought that that was a bad thing. I thought that that being vulnerable was a bad thing. Because I felt like you know, I couldn't truly embrace myself. I couldn't be myself. Again, like, especially when I was in school, I remember it was one time, um, maybe it's like around in fourth grade, and I remember uh, I, my teacher took the whole class out for bathroom breaks. Um, and, and of course, you know, the girls is on the other side, the boys on the side, on the other side, and I remember being behind this one boy and I remember him having an issue with me being behind him because he said that I was too close on him and I, and I really wasn't, to be honest. And and of course, you know, he raised his hand and he told the teacher and he was like, hey, can you tell around to scoot back because he's too close on me? And I'm like in my head, like, why is that an issue? Why is that a problem? You act like I done something to you. You know, you act like I hit you or, you know, whatever. So I'm like, in my head, why is that an issue? Why do you feel the need to to tell the teacher that I'm too close behind you? And then from that moment there, I felt like people always felt uncomfortable around me be, just because of their assumptions. And then from there, I remember another time when this boy that I was talking to, me and my friend at the time was talking to, and I'm just like, we all would just have like a normal conversation. And all of a sudden, I, you know, I was speaking and he was like, are you a boy or a girl? And I'm like, like, dude, clearly I'm a boy. Like, that's why I said in my head, I didn't say that out loud. Because when he said that, I was just completely stunned. Like, no words come out. Like, I was just frozen. And But in my mind, I was like, like, dude, clearly I'm a boy. Don't you see me like like I'm a boy? So I felt like ever since then, I felt uncomfortable. And I always felt um, that feeling of not knowing my identity. Identity confusion. Because I felt like, okay, well... Even though I'm a boy, but I don't feel like a boy. You know, I don't feel like, um, like I feel like, like I feel like their interpretation 
of what a man or what a boy is supposed to be like. Like, it's not responding. Like, I'm not operating in that form, if that makes sense. I felt like that's what they felt like I wasn't doing. And for me, I was having a hard time with that, you know. Because I'm like, you know, like, I am a boy. Like, there's no doubt about that, you know. But again, like, I felt like I didn't have a footing when it came to grammar school and high school. Like, I felt no belonging. I felt like, like, okay, like, even though I'm a boy and I look like a boy, but I don't feel like a boy because I'm not being accepted by my peers because of their assumptions and their, them feeling uncomfortable around me. And every time I come around, it's like eggshells because it seems like they don't know how to they don't know how to uh, they don't know how to be around me that like they don't know how to conversate with me they don't know how to you know respond to me or just talk to me just engage with me so i felt i've always felt like that you know you know i always felt uncomfortable around people i always felt like i was walking around eggshells or people's walking around eggshells when it comes to me and i feel like i have a footing or a belonging or not being accepted by peers you know but they wasn't the only one i mean i remember you know a lot of people not just my peers but other people like you know thinking I was one thing, you know, just because of their assumptions of me. And, and of course, like, me, like, when they tell me that, like, I felt, you know, I felt, even though I already knew that they already felt that way about me, but I felt, like, okay, like, I felt numb to it. Like, I, I basically got used to it, you know. Unfortunately, that became second nature to me. You know, people think that I'm gay. Okay, I just ran with it. I'm like, okay, like, you know, tell them something that I already don't know. Based upon what you told me, like, there, nothing has changed. So I got used to people assuming that I was gay over and over again repeatedly. It just became second nature to me, and I became numb to it. But I feel like all those little things cause me not to feel comfortable in my masculinity because of me latching on their fears, you know, their assumptions, them feeling uncomfortable around me. I latch that on to myself and that became my identity. And I feel like if I was a firm in myself, and reassure myself, and even validate who I am, then I wouldn't have fall victim into their traps or into their perceptions of what they perceived of me. And that I wouldn't have grabbed on, or I wouldn't have gravitate towards what they said, and that just became my identity. That became all that I am. I just say that to say that that I have to be comfortable with myself. Even if I feel uncomfortable internally. I have to ignore that feeling, that doubt, that insecurity, that flaw. Even that trauma. I'm not going to lie, my trauma, it, it it does affect me. It does. And and unfortunately, it, it shaped my masculinity, it shaped all that I am. But I have to come to the realization that it doesn't get to define who I am. It doesn't. Even what people perceive me as or assumed me to be, that doesn't have to be my reality. It doesn't have to be my identity. Even though... I don't think people saying it now, and to be honest, I really don't care now, but but I need to stop giving people their words. I need to stop giving them meaning. Because I feel like I've been doing that my whole life, giving what they say meaning. 
and I don't have to. But unfortunately, it has become my trauma, and I have to. I don't have. I, I have. I have to live with it. But I have to be able to get out of it, come out of it. If I live through the experience, then I can be able to come out of, out of it. If that makes sense, hope you guys follow it me. But I just feel like that I have to be comfortable in my masculinity, and I'm not trying to give anybody tips on masculinity. Because at the end of the day, what works for you, works for you. And I feel like for me, I find who I am in my masculinity as far as living through the experience, learning from it, and just finding out what works best for me and staying true to myself and making sure that I stay true to myself. Because sometimes I can slip up. Sometimes I can go through those toxic patterns of of self-doubt, you know, worries, fear, you know, me feeling that eternal feeling of not feeling belonging, not feeling like I have a place in the world, uh, especially when it comes to, you know, manhood, especially when it comes to masculinity, you know, because I'm not gonna lie, again, it does bother me, you know, not feeling, not feeling like I'm a part of something. And I think, that's what I feel like I kind of have, like, the hunger for and the desire to want to feel a part of something. Want to be a part of the guys, you know. Want to feel like I belong. Want to feel accepted for me. But still to know that I am that man. Like, you know, like, I can hail it down. Like, you know, I can do... What I need to do as far as being a man. But again, like sometimes, y'all, being a man is hard. It isn't easy, you know, especially walking in my own shoes, living my own life. Like that's that's hard sometimes. You know. Sometimes I feel like I'm not a man. Sometimes I have my days where I'm like, like, LeBron, you're not a man. You you're not doing this. You don't have that. You know. Sometimes, uh, you know, I do have those moments. Sometimes I wallow in my self-pity, especially when I have those moments where I feel like I'm not a man, where I'm not doing my part when it comes to, you know, doing what I need to do for myself. You know, I do have my moments. That's why I'm not going to lie. I was kind of hesitant of doing this episode because I'm like, I don't have all the answers and I can't give you, you know, most of my viewers who are men that listen to this podcast, I can't give you any advice as far as masculinity, because I'm still figuring it out. I'm still learning. I'm still growing, you know. But the thing, but the good thing about it is that, you know, all of us, each and every man, live a different life. We all walk in our own shoes. We all have a story. And we know our own story. And we're the ones that are continually to live it. And we can tell you our story. We can tell you what works best for us. But it all has to do with you. So I feel like for me, I have to do the necessary things for me, for myself. Doing what I need to do for me because I can't be like anybody else. I can't, you know, I can't be no one else but LaRon. And being LeRon is hard sometimes, you know. You know, I have my moments where, like I said, I can't. Sometimes I I question myself. But I think is that even when I question myself, I had to continue to get back up. I had to continue to keep pushing, keep pursuing, keep going after what I want. You know. But again, y'all, being a man is hard. I'm not going to lie, you know, my whole life, I just felt like, like a missing piece. That's missing towards the puzzle and trying to find that perfect fit. I felt like that all the way through my life. You know, from the time I was younger, 
all the way up to now. Well, all the way up to my younger years and my teen years. My adult years, I'm still figuring it out. But back then, yeah. You know, I felt like that. Even within my own family, I felt like that, you know. All my male cousins, you know, grew up. And then by the time I came in, you know, they all was gone. They all was gone. And they always, and they all were grown. So it was just me and my younger cousins. I mean, not you know, my, me, not me and my young cousins, but me and my girl cousins. And yeah, so my whole life I've just been raised around females. And I always thought that was a bad thing. Sometimes I still do, but my best friend reminded me that that is okay. That is okay. You know. But but yeah, I, I felt like a missing piece. But I realized that I can't allow myself to choose to be a missing piece. I have to accept myself as I am, as the man that I am today and as the man that I aspire to be. You know, life may life may knock me down. It may throw its punches at me, but I need to continue to pursue myself and and continue to choose me and be for me. But yeah, y'all, it was it was hard. It was hard growing up. Sometimes it's still hard growing up now. Because again, sometimes I question my masculinity. Sometimes I question myself as a man. But I have to give myself some grace and some compassion and some love towards myself. Because I have come a long way. But but yeah, all I say that to say is that I'm going to continue to be me. But I should not always be so focused on being a man. But learn that I am also human and that I make mistakes. But I have to choose to learn from them, to grow from them. And again, like there's no subtle way to being a man. You just continue to be you. And you find what works best for you. And you just stay true to that. You don't compromise for anything or anyone. And that it's all about being authentic. And not not being like nobody else. Y'all, I'm glad that I'm doing this episode. Because again, like I did have some reservations about this. But doing this, it feels very therapeutic for me. Because I feel like I'm finally coming to the realization of accepting myself. And y'all, it's hard. It is. It's hard being a man now more than ever. Especially in society that we live in. I mean, it's hard being a man, but to also be a black man in America, in society right now, it's hard. It's not easy. It's both a gift and a curse. But I'm going to continue to thrive. I'm going to continue to keep pursuing. But yeah, I thank you guys for tuning into this episode. I appreciate all of you guys, all the support, and and I hope you guys will continue to listen to this podcast, continue to share this podcast. But on next week's episode, we'll be talking about sexuality, which I'm really looking forward to discussing that. Um... Yeah, becoming safe in my sexuality. That's next week episode that we'll be talking about. But thank you guys for tuning in. 
I appreciate you guys. And take care. Bye.